Okay, now we're going to talk about how you take these static context diagrams and turn them into full use case diagrams. So we finished the last video talking about this, this is the relationship between our actors and our system. And we got to this by clarifying our functional requirements, identifying the actors, and then identifying the interactions between our user and our system. One thing I haven't talked about so far is the difference between primary and secondary actors. So if we go back here, the cardholder, the bank customer, and potentially even the maintenance operator, these are all primary um, users of the system. They use the system to achieve some end, whereas the Visa authentication system and the bank authentication system that you can see, uh, that you can see here is <clears throat> are secondary actors. They are actors used by the system to achieve some end. So if your actor is using the system to achieve a goal, they are a primary actor. If your system is using the actors, then they are secondary actors. A small but important difference. So in general, what we are going to do is uh, we're going to add our primary actors in, add the functional requirements, what must we be able to do that are relevant as use cases, then we're going to connect the actors to the use cases, add the system boundary, and finally add our secondary actors. So starting out like this, these are our primary actors. As I said, the maintenance operator, you could argue they were a secondary actor as well. Um, I would argue they are a primary actor because they will be using the system quite a lot uh, as well. Now we add our use cases, and you can see there's a variety of them there. And this is all very high level. Withdraw money will have lots of complicated steps within it, but we don't care about that at the moment. These are just general descriptors of what, these, what actions these actors will use the system to do. Beyond that, we map which actors have access to which use cases. Obviously, we don't want a cardholder to be able to retrieve lost cards. Um, and notice that while the actors are separate, this is why we don't give them specific names, because one person could uh, be particular actors. For example, the maintenance operator may also be a cardholder, but rather than by a one specific maintenance operator, so let's call him John, happens to also have a card with this bank, he will also be a cardholder, but we don't show that kind of level of relationship here. That's why we keep the actors general. Now we draw the bounds of our system, so we're essentially saying which of these use cases are part of our system and which are not. And here, all the examples I've given are part of our system, but in many cases, this is less trivial than what we've seen here. And then finally, we add in our secondary actors. The secondary actors usually appear on the right-hand side of the diagram. All the relationships are marked with this secondary tag, and we connect them to all the use cases that require them. Now, they didn't remove the maintenance operator, I just moved it out, moved him out or her out to get it, make the picture slightly clearer. Um, the catch though is that you can have use cases which are different depending on which actor uses them. And an example might be withdraw money. So a card holder should only be able to withdraw money, we're going to say, via their Visa card. Whereas a bank customer might be able to withdraw money from their internal bank account, particularly if you're using, say, an overseas ATM. And so if this is the case, we separate those two use cases out to look at something like this. So we have a withdraw money that is now called a visa, and we have a withdraw money that is some internal bank system. Um, you may, depending on the number of actors you have, end up with quite a few duplicate use cases like this, and that is absolutely fine. We'll see once we get into use case bodies why this is important. The other thing though, is that you can also have some actors that inherent use cases from other actors. You can see an example on the left here where our bank customer can also do everything that a card holder can do. Um, so the arrow goes from the inheritee to the inherit uh, from the inheritor to the inheritee. So this arrow shows that the bank customer inherits everything from cardholder as well. And that essentially allows us to do things like have uh, show uh, upgrading and membership and different kind of um, security levels, different access levels within the withdraw, uh, within these different use cases. And while all this shows us what the primary relationships are and what the primary use cases are, it's still not quite enough to tell us what is going on with the system, because we also need to understand the dynamics of what going on, what are going on. 
and by that I mean what order do things happen in, when do they fail, when do they succeed, we need a lot more information. So use case body is a great way to describe these early interactions and to discuss with clients or managers how the system is going to come together, but for more detail we'll need use case bodies and that will be the topic of the next lecture.